Yeah, um, my name is, as we said, Lars. Um, I've been in the merchant fleet since I was 17. Been working there for about 12 years, uh, and starting as a cadet and ending up as a chief engineer. And, and then eventually I wanted to try something else. And then I heard about the whole yachting industry and other things, other challenges, and some of the things are really different from <coughs> commercial and and the yachting and one of the things is the prioritization you have your main engines of course they need to work but if there are slight problems it's not a big issue but if a expression machine air condition breaks down then it's a big issue and you will get to know it from the owners and these things just has to work and that's why the whole building off on this industry is very much with the maintenance system this is the engine control room where it's possible to uh, observe all the equipment we have on board. Here we have the auxiliary engine controls that are able to be synchronized at the moment. It's, you can see we are under shore power. And up here you can, for instance, see the, the amount of kilowatt we are using. So it's about 240. Uh, in the normal day life while sailing, we are observing all the engine parameters on the screens and we can also see the upcoming alarms on the gauges up here. We have all the, the needed information for the pressures and temperatures on the main engines. Over here we have the tank gauges. We have controls for opening uh, uh, wells from the remote wells. We have all the fans here and that's the main thing here. And then we have the different consumers that we can switch on and off from in here also. And this is also our office uh, where we are communicating uh, with Shaw. In here we have uh, two out of three auxiliary engines. Every, each in the auxiliary engine is able to uh, produce about 300 kilowatts. A boat on this size uh, a uh, yacht also has stabilizers, so when we are out in bad weather, we are able to actually keep uh, quite still, even in, in bad weather. It's uh, really, uh, really well in the way that it's controlling uh, all the movements that is coming from the waves. We have a swimming pool pump, also a quite important part of the boat. The generators are fitted with uh, burner that is burning off all suit so we avoid having suit on the tick deck and we have uh, a bilge fire pump on a boat like this it's extremely important to have uh, efficient safety and here we have uh, what is called a high fox system if you have any fire anywhere on the boat we have small bulbs that will uh, release and then uh, high pressure water will come out from the bulbs and uh, extinguish the fire within seconds. Simply uh, removing all the oxygen from the fire and then the fire is, uh, is extinct. We have uh, water makers that is working on the principle of reverse osmosis. So high pressure going up to 60 bars. And it's a system that can produce, we have two units here and each one can produce 14 liters per minute. We have, a, we have a sewage system that is actually um, breaking down the sewage so we are actually allowed to, when we are en route, to pump out afterwards so it's fully treated, all the sewage on board. We have a, what is called a toilet vacuum system. So we have like screw pumps here that is uh, creating the vacuum for all the toilets. All the sewage is coming down into this tank and then going to the sewage treatment plant afterwards. What we have here is the controls for the air, air condition. So there you have like a sea pump to cool down the fryer. You have uh, brine water pumps. And then you have the whole control for how, how much it actually needs to, um, to work the power consume. And here is the, the unit it's 
itself that is actually where you are cooling down the air that goes to uh, all the different parts of the boat. And here you have the, the screw compressors for the air condition. Down in the end you have the fire pump, fire and bilge pump. In the merchant fleet you you are on the go all the time, you're sailing a lot when you're in port, you have maybe one, two days to to fix the engines, then you go off again and then of course then then it's a bit more settled down, it's maintenance again, the things that are not running. And then when you get to port then it's full on again, maintaining things. While in the yachting industry you actually when you get to port you have time to actually go out, socialize a bit and see the places where you go and that's not really possible anymore in the commercial. And here we have uh, all our fresh water for the boat. So the fresh water pumps, the hot water pumps, we have like a UV uh, unit treating the water. We have a silver iron unit treating the water so we are sure that there will never be any issues with water or contamination of any kind, bacteria wise. Um, hot water boilers two pieces, what is called uh, water hydrofoils that is uh, keeping the pressure on the water at all times. So here we have uh, the two main engines, the control and starting up for the main engines. The gearbox and down here we have our workshop. Uh, I have a second engineer, then uh, there's an electrician also on ETO who is mainly up on the bridge doing his work from there and he's in charge of all the, the entertainment like televisions and computers, internet, which also is a really big thing in the yachting. I mean, when the owner's on board, it just has to work. I mean, many of the, the owners, they're actually working from the boat even though they're on holiday, so that also has to just work.